Just over 50 years ago, the Austrian government decided to build three nuclear reactors along the Danube River. It was the age of the atom, the height of the space race. Nuclear power seemed like the natural next step for Austria. But politically, it was risky, and the decision was extremely controversial. It took many years of arguments and protests, but eventually, the country held a referendum. The government asked the people of Austria, do you want nuclear power? And the vote was on a knife edge. When everything was counted, 50 and a half percent said no. The trouble was, they'd already built the first reactor. They just hadn't turned it on yet. This nuclear power plant was built up from 1972 to 1976. Everything was here. Uh, the power plant was ready for operation, including the fuel rods. You only have to put the red button uh, to put it into operation. And then the Chancellor of Austria decided to hold a public referendum. We like to say this special nuclear power plant never splits any atoms, but people, families and political parties. The capacity of the nuclear power plant in Zwentendorf was 750 megawatt. This reactor should have produced electricity for 1.8 million households. So what do you do with a never used nuclear power plant? It's not like you can just flat pack it and ship it over to the border to somewhere that does want it. And this was incredibly expensive. Adjusting for inflation in today's money, this plant cost over a billion euro. When the result of the public referendum was mentioned on the national TV stations, for 200 people here in Zwentendorf, it was a shock. Nobody estimated this result. The owners, they decided to conservate the reactor because they thought that politicians will change their mind and they are able to put the reactor into operation in one or two or three years. But that never happened. So in 1985 they started to sell parts of the equipment, but this selling process was not very successful. And today we have 99% of the equipment still here. Evian bought the nuclear power plant in 2005. Uh, we don't have plans now to use it, but if there is someday the need for gas-fired power plant or alternative fired power plant, for example with biomass, uh, it's a perfect location. In the meantime, it's a training center for nuclear engineers for training how you can rebuild the reactor. We offer it for a filming location. We use it for music festivals, 15,000 people outside and inside. We installed in 2009 a solar power plant and since 2010 we offer guided tours. It's open to the public. You can book your reservation, but normally we are full for six months within some minutes. EVN bought not only a technical building, we bought also a very specific piece of Austrian's contemporary history. Here everything is like it was more than 40 years ago. I love the special atmosphere you have here and I'm really glad to present it to other people. After the referendum, Austria went on to entirely ban nuclear power within its borders. Maybe because residents had concerns about accidents, or maybe because they didn't want to deal with the waste and long-term planning, or maybe, if you believe conspiracy theories, because some of the people who ran energy companies back then were worried about prices dropping and threw a load of money at a scare campaign, the story changes a lot depending on who's telling it. And it is the politically easy option to phase out nuclear power, particularly now as wind and solar continue to become more and more viable. A lot of countries are phasing out nuclear. I shouldn't be able to stand here. This reactor should have run for about 35 years, and now it'd be almost finished being decommissioned. There'd be hardly anything left. Instead, we got a training center, a filming location, and yeah, a very expensive occasional tourist attraction. But perhaps most importantly, we got a museum. Because this reactor doesn't have to be decommissioned. It's the only one on the planet where this 1970s dream of the atomic age can be preserved, if only by accident. 
Many, many thanks to Stefan Zak and all the team at EVN who gave us so much access to this incredible place. You can find out more about them at the link in the description.